messages and calls a little bit later on, you know, talking about policing, their approach to finding missing people. Is it OK? They divulge a lot of information. I'm going to take uh, more calls on that a little bit in a few moments. Uh, but first, let's get you up to date on everything you need to know uh, about the world of finance and what is going on. Uh, Roger Gewold, uh, personal finance and credit expert, joins me now. He's also CEO of Fair Money. Good evening to you, sir. Good, Good evening, to have you back. CEO. Thank you. So, you know, I was going to say the positives of COVID. So there were some upsides to COVID, which was we found out that actually there are many, plenty alternative ways of working which would not only benefit the company but also maybe benefit staff so especially people like you know women uh, who are single parents dads who are single parents they wanted to work their work life around around work they can work remotely do that juggle do that hustle and things could work well but amazon are saying actually maybe we're gonna we're gonna roll back on that yeah i mean apple did it uh, lots of people have done it oh, elon really? musk has done it with uh, uh, Tesla? Uh, yeah, Tesla? Uh, well, Tesla and Twitter. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Amazon is saying three days. Uh, Elon has said, no, no, back in the office full time. So, he, so what are Amazon saying exactly? That they, they want people back in the office three days. No options, no choice. Whereas before, people could work from home full yeah. time, five days a week? Yeah, up to, yeah. Okay. How do you feel about that? It's a really tricky question because mm. you don't know... Uh, uh, what it produces. I think the results are different, <clears throat> pardon me, company to company. Uh, it really depends on the makeup of people. Now, on the one hand, uh, as my badge says, you know, we're all in debt. The cost of living crisis is murderous and, and smug Jezza. Our chancellor is going to increase corporation tax next just to squeeze us a bit more. Uh, and, you know, to tell people they've got to come into the office and change their lives and all that just makes it tougher. People are struggling with the cost of living. And now, if you can't be out doing what you got to do to maybe earn a few quid extra or batten down a hatch or do mm -hmm. something, and you've got to be in the office uh, all day long, five days a week, or even three, four days a week, that's tough. On the other hand, uh, there, there's an argument the other way, which is that if you just let everybody make their own choice, it would be, as they say, like a committee writing Shakespeare. Well, it's, so there is a definitely a debate to be had yeah. you know what if the company is seeing a reduction in production uh, in terms of you know that they're, they're not producing as much maybe staff aren't working well working from home not working effectively it's impacting you know what they can do for customers clients you know making money surely then there could be an argument to to bring staff back into the office totally right i mean that, that's got to be the first argument mm. <clears throat> if productivity has decreased has declined since the pandemic, because people aren't in there full time, the decision for management's pretty easy. And if it's gone the other way, hasn't changed or even improved, that requires a different decision. Mm. And, and then you've got the other argument, which is, you know, it's a cost of living crisis, right? Things are just crazy expensive. So we're talking, they can save money on transport, they can save money maybe on childcare, sure. right? If they find a way to navigate working effectively, but yet maybe spending less money on childcare. Childcare is so expensive and it actually uh, can limit the the work progression of people who choose to stay at home, which usually tend to be women. So actually that working from home and being able to still play a part in working life could have helped their their career progression so there's so many there were some benefits to working from there, home as well absolutely there are arguments every which way i mean you know i could sit here the rest of the day and give you all the arguments another argument that bosses make is there you know there's two kinds of people there's people who work in companies and organizations there's people who work for themselves people who work in companies and organizations do so because they they want the structure they to a certain extent want to be told what to do so you can't say to them hey guys make up your mind you got to tell them what to do that's one argument mm. i really think you have to do it company by company and each management team of every company needs to assess firstly what you just said what's happened during the pandemic have we gone up down stayed the same etc yeah. second what do the employees feel about this I, I don't mean that they vote and that's decisive what do they feel about it and then i think the fair thing is to give whatever the majority of employees want a trial for a time, yeah. see how the numbers look, and then management has to decide what to do. Because there simply is, just like all of us are different, CL, there simply is no answer for every single business or government office or organization. No, it's true. And uh, by the way, one of the 
one of the big positives of going back into the office, it really is that that contact, that interaction. You know, if you hear somebody mention something, you can just drop in either with an idea or help with whatever is being discussed. Or likewise, you're just a little bit more involved. You know what's going on in the office, for, particularly for young people entering Absolutely. into the workforce or just, you know, getting trained up. To totally. There's a big, there's a huge advantage, therefore, being in the office. But hey, you know, as you say, so complex. Yeah, totally. you can see and getting promoted and too, negatives. especially for young people. when you're seen. You're not going to get promoted as yeah. quickly sitting at home by yourself as you are going out to lunch and mixing it. Oh, it's a, it's a tough one, but yeah, you're, you're right. Other companies are have done the same things. Disney, Starbucks, as you say, Tesla, Twitter. They've all they're all asking people to come back into the office. Uh, let's talk about our economy. So you mentioned COVID pandemic, and indeed that's what what led to a lot of people working from home. Um, we are now recovering, but for some reason, compared to other countries, Germany, America, who all went through you know, the same issue of the pandemic. They're doing better than us. In fact, we're, we're really lagging behind. What, what's that about? We're, we're in last position. I mean, really? yeah, the chart is frightening. You've got all these blue bars to the right and only poor old UK to the left in red. What's going on? Why? I get a lot of calls, CL, saying to me, what's going on? Why in the world should we be in last place? And I've been thinking about this. And the answer is, I think, bad management. Just like any company, it's bad management. We have got a, a leadership uh, and an opposition where we've had, I, just let me look at my list here. I mean, there's no teamwork really. Mm -hmm. There's terrible infighting, chaos, disorganization, lack of focus, tons of self-interest above the national good, scandals, corruption, one thing after another. If you had that in any business, they'd go bankrupt, right? I mean, we see it every day in the media. Now, really it's as simple as, the chickens have come home to roost. I know there's a lot of press uh, and media saying, oh, it's Brexit, it's Schmexit, it's, mm. uh, you know, the price of this and that. It's not. It's bad management. Really? Are you, why, what could, and you're, you're not even actually, you're not just blaming the Tory party, you're also looking at the opposition as well. What, what could they have done that other leaders have done in places like Germany I, and America? I think we have a crisis in world leadership in, in almost every country except perhaps Ukraine. <laughs> you know, we, we have people who are letting us down, frankly. Um, and um, even Moody's, the giant uh, bond rating agency, you know, the chickens come home to roost. Moody's, back in, in uh, late last year, actually downgraded the credit rating of right. our country, yeah. the UK. <clears throat> and the reasons... But they put it up, though, right? Uh, no, but we're still downgraded? We're still downgraded. We're not okay. where we should be, okay, let's put okay, it that way. Okay. Uh, I mean, we used to be, you know... We're indeed yeah. leading the way, yeah, okay. top. And the reasons cited, uh, these words are, are really, you know, very chilling. Um, um, instability uh, of policy, instability of policy, and poor growth. Those are the two things that Moody's said about the bonds, the credit worthiness of the United Kingdom. Because we, no, we do have a staff shortage situation, workers shortage, sure. so lots of jobs, can't fill them, people asking for more money. Well, why is it, it, it feels, I mean, you can, you know, let me know, is, is this something that other countries are experiencing sure. to the same extent? Well, you just said, level? I mean, all these economic factors are being felt everywhere. Um, <clears throat> but what's unique here? is that we have had so many strikes in protest to the way yeah, things yeah. are happening. We've had so much infighting, so many scandals, the chickens have come home to roost. And Moody's looked at it and said, I mean, those words, instability of policy, must be, you know, the, the most dangerous thing for any nation. If, if you don't have a government that has a stable policy, where are you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Roger, always a pleasure. I hope you're going to be back and join us uh, next week. But that's for sure. A uh, Roger Gewolb, uh, CEO of Fair Money and Personal Finance and Credit Expert. Um,